All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. Thank you very much for giving me a couple of offs. I had a great new year. I hope that you enjoyed your new year as well. So happy new year to everyone. <clears throat> <laughs> so Luffy is actually sitting right here next to me. Uh, let's see if I can get him. <laughs> okay. So he ran away. <clears throat> so welcome, everyone. Uh, so there have been a few questions about the vaccines that have been very commonly asked. One of the questions that we would discuss today is the what happens with those spike proteins that the virus, pro uh, the vaccine produces? And are these spike proteins going to attach to our ACE2 receptors and cause a similar issue like the virus? The second question that has been very commonly asked nowadays is because of the UK's decision about the mixing of the vaccines. Uh, there is a, there are questions that would that be okay or not? And the third question is, of course, about the delay of the vaccine, which we have talked before. So I've talked about the um, what happens to the spike proteins previously in various videos as well, but I thought it is important to do that as a separate topic so that we can just focus on exactly how the vaccine will produce the spike proteins and what will happen to those spike proteins. So that is the topic today. Tomorrow, hopefully, we'll discuss the uh, mixing of the vaccines. So with this, welcome once again, and let's start our discussion. So this is drbean.com. Uh, here is a very good article that talks about messenger, various messenger RNA type vaccines and how they interact with our body. I have the links to all of these things in the description. There is another very good um, article over here. This is about the understanding of the MHC class one presentation of the viral antigens. So we will do that today, but if you wanted to dive deeper to understand in more exhaustive way, then you can read this article as well. Then here is a very decent diagram, which probably will make more sense as we go over the topic today. And then finally, here is the antigen presentation which we'll talk about today as well. But if you wanted to look at it, um, it is here too. So with this, now let's start our discussion. So the basic concern, if you can keep an eye on the concern, the concern is that once the vaccine is given and it starts producing spike proteins, what will happen? And will it cause the ACE2 receptor blockade and issues just like the virus does? So that is a basic concern. So the first thing to keep in mind is that the vaccine, I'm talking more in context of Moderna and Pfizer, even the, even the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine is an adenovirus with the RNA for the spike protein. So Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and others, they have the genetic material to produce spike protein not the whole virus. So please keep one of this uh, concept in mind. Then we are going to trace, we're going to follow what happens to the spike proteins. What would happen to that mRNA? So let's start. <clears throat> so imagine that this is our tissue. Let's say this is our shoulder muscle, the deltoid muscle in which the vaccine will be given. In that muscle, there are many, many cells sitting there for example, of course, the muscle cell itself, the muscle cells are there. Then there are tissue around the muscle, which is made up of many various kinds of cells. For example, fibroblasts are there that are making various kinds of fibrous part of the tissue like collagen and fibrin. Uh, then there are immune cells present. For example, dendritic cells, macrophages, natural killer cells, some T cells, some B cells, but most of the time, the innate arm cells are present everywhere. Uh, we know this that when the cells are coming out of the bone marrow, that will give rise to natural killer, sorry, macrophages and dendritic cells. Most of those cells, when they come out of the bone marrow, they're called monocytes. Monocytes then come out of the blood and migrate into various tissues and they take up residence there. They are immigrants that become resident in various tissues 
and then help the tissue defend itself. So here is a dendritic cell. These cells, the dendritic cell, macrophage, and B cells are called professional antigen presenting cells. What does that mean? This is their job to pick up an antigen and then present it to the immune cells, other immune cells that will then react and the immune cell immune system will work. At the same time, also keep in mind, cells like macrophages can also act as a factor cell. What that means is that they can actually take part in clearance of the antigen as part of the immune system's function. So now let's see what happens when the vaccine is given. And uh, some of you may have actually already seen this uh, discussion before because I've done this many times in other videos. Again, the point was to put that together here in one topic. So imagine that here is a needle in a deltoid muscle and this needle brings in this vaccine. And let's say this is a lipid nanoparticle based vaccine. That means it is an mRNA wrapped in lipid particles. So these particles are going to be picked up by all of these cells, dendritic cells, muscle cells, fibroblasts, and so on. I'm going to start with the muscle cell or fibroblast, any one of those cells. It can be these as well. Most of the time it is going to be these, but we'll encounter them a little later. So let's say that this lipid nanoparticle, because it is lipid, it is taken up by a cell present in that tissue. Once it is taken up, what happens is inside the cell. So now imagine this whole thing is the cell. Inside the cell, that lipid nanoparticle breaks down and the messenger RNA that is necessary to make the spike proteins is separated. Now, the first question, we're going to look at the vaccine throughout its life during after the injection. So imagine if there is some vaccine particles that are still sitting outside. They will be picked up by some cell. Let's say that some of them got digested outside and broke down and their RNA got released outside in the tissue. So not inside the cell, but outside in the tissue. Inside the tissues, we have enzymes called RNases. So wherever there is A's at, at the end of something, that means it is an enzyme that breaks that. For example, proteinase, proteinase will break protein. DNAs will break DNA. RNAs will break RNA. So there are tissue RNAs, enzymes and enzymes sitting in the tissue that are going to pick up that RNA and immediately destroy it, digest it, break it down and, and kill it. This is why actually the naked RNA vaccines are not very successful because the naked RNA vaccines, as soon as you inject that RNA in a tissue, the RNAs is pick them up and break them down. So they can still act like an antigen, that this is a piece of RNA that is broken down and is an antigen, it's a foreign material. But that RNA has not gotten a chance to allow the protein to be formed for, for which it is the recipe. So the actual function is not really done. Although sometimes we deliberately add RNA so that it would come out in the free tissue and kind of trigger the tissue when the RNAs is, are going to break this RNA, those broken pieces like glass pieces are going to trigger the immune system to function as well. But the vaccines that we are talking about, Moderna, Pfizer, they do not have free RNAs in them. So now if some particles were out there freely floating, didn't go in the cell, they would be digested and destroyed, including their RNA, and they have no spike proteins in them. Those particles that had a chance to get into the cell and release their RNA, their RNA or messenger RNA will be picked up by our ribosomes. Ribosomes are small factories. I think of them as cute tailors who would pick up or cooks who will pick up a recipe and then make a protein from it. 
they would pick up a genetic materials piece and look at that piece and see what kind of a protein it wants to make and it will make that protein so here if you can see here what is happening is ribosome has picked up the rna that was inside the lipid nanoparticle this all is happening inside a cell it may be a fibroblast it may be a dendritic cell it may be a muscle cell it may be other tissue cells cool so now the ribosome will manufacture the proteins that are uh, encoded in this genetic material so in this case of these um, vaccines it is the spike protein here so imagine a bunch of spike proteins are produced now these spike proteins within the cell are fed into another um, uh, small machinery which is called proteasome proteasome these are like small microscopic threshers in our cell they break down the proteins why do they break them down of course we our cells keep recycling the proteins and some proteins need to be broken down then the foreign material that comes in for example this spike protein is a foreign material that is also digested so now the very first point here that if you feel that hey this spike protein is going to go and attach to an ace2 the spike protein has to find a way to get out it cannot just get out our cells do not allow proteins to just leak out unless they are cells of that type for example the glandular cells the hormones hormone secreting cells allow special secretions they are designed to allow things to secrete out but that mechanism is a very sophisticated mechanism they decide what to secrete and they they have special mechanisms to secrete them so it is not possible for some protein to just willy-nilly get out of a cell unless the cell is broken down and killed we'll look into that in a second so this spike protein here does not have a chance to get out of the cell and go bind with some ace2 the spike protein will be fed into the proteasome that is going to break it down into smaller pieces let's call it digestion we have digested it we have broken it down when it is digested now we have bunch of broken pieces of the spike protein so imagine spike protein is like a like a small hand made up of glass and so when that hand is manufactured it is then fed into a proteasome which will then break that glass and make small pieces from it so if you are following you would see that so far spike protein does not stand a chance to go out and attach anywhere to any ace enzyme or even outside in the tissue it cannot just go there yet cool so we have now broken down the spike protein these small pieces of the spike protein will then be loaded on special proteins which are called major histocompatibility complexes or mhcs and there are two types mhc1 and mhc2 the cells that we talked about here professional antigen presenting cells normally have mhc2 they have mhc1 as well because they're nucleated cells they make both but their basic function is to make mhc2 other cells muscle cell or fibroblast or other tissue cells their job is to make mhc1 when they have cancer in them or when they have some foreign material as we are seeing here so now what's going to happen is these and these small pieces are going to go to endoplasmic reticulum this is endoplasmic reticulum this is another small machinery that is located next to the nucleus of our cells endoplasmic reticulum is going to receive these pieces of the foreign antigen so remember they are not complete spike proteins anymore they have become shattered by proteasome and they are small pieces now they come in these channels by the way are called taps tap transport associated proteins so there are channels that have taps with them and then these proteins get into the endoplasmic reticulum inside the endoplasmic reticulum we make proteins that are called mhc1 
these MSC1 proteins, if you see here, if you look at this thing here, the proteasome, this uh, endoplasmic reticulum has loaded MHC1, this red part, it is called MHC1. MHC1, it is loaded with the antigen, a piece of the spike protein, a broken part of the spike protein. Then they are wrapped in a vesicle, they are wrapped in a small bubble. And then that bubble goes to the cell's membrane and then it is presented on the cell surface. So the concept of spike protein itself getting out is really difficult because cell has no secretory mechanism. And even the pieces of spike protein cannot get out. They are actually loaded onto the MHC1 or MHC2 and in a controlled manner presented on the surface of the cell. So I hope this much is clear. Before I continue, what happened was, what did we see? We saw that the messenger RNA, messenger RNA arrived in our cell. If it stayed outside for some reason, it will be broken down by RNases. Now, once the messenger RNA is inside our cell, then it is fed into a ribosome and the ribosome makes from them the protein, spike protein. Then that spike protein is fed into a shredder called proteosome. So spike protein doesn't have a chance to get out and go and bother any ACE enzymes. Then those broken pieces of the spike protein are fed into the endoplasmic reticulum. See how tightly controlled this whole mechanism is? This is exactly what we do with the cancer particles. This is what we do with the actual viruses. This is what we do with the actual bacteria, fungus, and other things. This is exactly how we behave or our system behaves. Now, the once these particles have been generated, so the pieces of this spike protein are loaded onto MHC1, and then they are presented here on the surface. Once they are presented here, MHC1 goes with cytotoxic T cells or CD8 cells. So we have a little formula that we say that the MHC complex multiplied with the cell number should always be 8. So if the complex is 1, then to make it 8, it always works with the cell type 8, CD8. CD8 cells are cytotoxic T cells. So now what happens is, CD8 cell that are sitting in the tissue, they will bind here. And they will bind and they'll say, okay, you have MHC1 here. So this is their CD8 protein that would, with one hand, this is, you know, sometimes people, when they do a handshake, they hold other person's arm or forearm with the one hand and then they shake the hand and do this. It is exactly that thing here. So the CD8, is holding on to the MHC1 itself. And then T cell receptor is binding with the antigen presented on the MHC1. What a tight and sophisticated control here. There is no spike protein itself to go away and do something. Even the pieces of spike proteins are not allowed to escape anywhere. Now they are being presented here to the uh, CD8 cell. CD8 cell then, in the presence of interleukin-2, and we'll talk about that in a second. So I have made the same CD8 over here now facing another cell. So in the presence of interleukin-2, CD8 cell becomes, imagine that this whole big cell that I was showing, now for our uh, ease of understanding, imagine that was this cell. And CD8 cell was connected here. Now CD8 cell, once it becomes triggered with the co-stimulation of interleukin-2, it will release perforins. Perforins are proteins that create perforations or holes. And granzymes, granzymes are proteins that are like hand grenades. These proteins would go into the cell that was a sick cell, in, in this case, the, the cell that is presenting the pieces of spike protein, and these granzymes are going to then tell the cell to kill itself. This is the process. 
Now, you have a fair question here, and that is, <clears throat> this cell, which was just killed, it had spike proteins in it, which were not yet broken down. Plus, it had some messenger RNAs in it as well that were yet not worked on. They are, once the cell breaks down, they are going to come out from the broken cell. Now we have the spike protein out in the open, and they are complete spike proteins. Now they have a chance to go bother some ACE2 receptors, correct? But here is what happens. As soon as the NA, uh, messenger RNA is leaked out of the cell, of a broken cell, that is destroyed by RNAs. There is nothing that can roam around in our body without our body's approval. Even in the case of actual SARS-CoV-2, this is what our body does with it. So SARS-CoV-2 and body is going on a fight. SARS-CoV-2 knows the way to keep entering the new cells and increasing in number and then breaking the cell or coming out of it and entering a new cell. These spike proteins do not have that thing with it. They are not the whole virus. So when they come out, when the messenger RNAs come out, they are immediately digested by the RNAs and destroyed. When the spike proteins are leaked out, now they would have two destinations. Majority of them are going to be immediately picked up by the immune cells sitting in the tissue. So this all is happening still, let's say, in the deltoid. They would pick it up, the, the macrophages and the dendritic cells here in the deltoid. They're going to pick up these leaked spike proteins. And they would digest them as well, just like the other spike protein that was formed inside the cell. And I'll show you that in a second. Now, imagine some spike proteins actually escape that as well. They are just sitting here, and they find another cell, and they actually bind with the ACE2 receptor. So what? So you know that the spike protein, if it binds the ACE2 receptor, the concern will be, well, it has bound the ACE2 receptor. ACE2 receptor was supposed to do its own function. Now we have a virus-like behavior here. But think about it for a second. Viruses, when SARS-CoV-2 appears in our body, it has to make millions and millions of copies and continue to come out of the cell and attach to the new cell and then come out of the cell and they attach to the new cell and continuously bother us. Even then, in majority of the cases, it cannot really do much. In 20% of the cases, the cytokine storm occurs. Our body responds overwhelmingly. And then that response reaches a point of killing us as well. But if just the whole virus was doing its function of replicating, coming out, replicating, it doesn't really cause too much of a destruction. Here we are talking about a few spike proteins. So you can see that majority of them were broken down inside the cell. The one that leaked out got picked up by the antigen presenting cells or the innate arm that, and then some that still escaped attached to the cells. Now, what happens with the cell? Let's think about this guy for a second. Is this cell now doomed? Is it gone? Is this cell destroyed? No. Uh, and I'll give you an example. People who take ACE inhibitors for their blood pressure control, they have to take that medicine every day. Why? Because attaching to the ACE once is not sufficient. Our cells are able to internalize the ACE receptors and digest them and then make new ACE re receptors and put them out. So there are millions and millions of ACE2 receptors. So let's say some of them have become affected. So what? 100 cells, 200 cells may not function or may function less because there are their ACE2 receptors are bothered or they are occupied. One set of spike protein is not going to be sufficient, which is coming out of one cell, to actually really block even one other cell. And the, once again, the example is to, you have to take ACE inhibitors every day. So you can't just say that, all right, you know what, some 10 spike proteins came and attached to 10 receptors and there would be something happening, number one. Number two, 
the imbalance between ACE 1 and ACE 2 needs a huge volume of the virus and continuous onslaught by that virus to keep bringing the cells down, then to go in them and cause destruction of the cells. These spike proteins are not going to be capable of doing that. So now we have taken care of these that did get attached to receptors. Not much concern here. Now let's look at those that got picked up by macrophages, neutrophils, or dendritic cell. So I'm going to talk about macrophage and dendritic cells. Neutrophil would just simply pick them up and destroy them. Macrophages and dendritic cell, imagine this is that cell now. We are looking inside a dendritic cell or a macrophage. So here, if you look here, this is the spike protein eaten up by the cell. This is a phagosome. So when the cells would eat up this spike protein, they will make a vesicle around this or they will make a purse around this and bring it in. That will be called a phagosome. Now that phagosome inside the cell is connected with lysosome. Lysosome are small packets inside the cell that are filled with acids, bleach and those things. So here both of them are connected together, the phagosome and lysosome and the acids present in the lysosome are going to break down the spike protein. So once again, the spike protein got broken down. Those small pieces of the spike protein now will be loaded. Remember, we are talking about antigen presenting cells. Now we are talking about specialized immune cells. In these cells, in their endoplasmic reticulum, they make another protein called MHC2, major histocompatibility complex number two. This complex comes out of the endoplasmic reticulum and goes into the phagolysosomes where the antigens are being broken down. And here, if you see, this is a MHC2 molecule that has become loaded with a piece of the spike protein. Once again, keep an eye that spike protein has become destroyed. It has become digested and the pieces of it are now being loaded on MHC2. Once they are loaded on the MHC2, they are brought out in the similar manner as MHC1, and they appear on the surface of the cell. So once again, the pieces of the spike protein in a very controlled fashion are presented on the surface of the cell. They're not just leaked out. The spikes are not just thrown out. They are in a very controlled way they're presented. I mean, we are a very sophisticated machine. So our, our body is not just sitting doing some really bizarre things. If that was the case, if we cannot handle a vaccine, which is a tiny amount of spike protein making messenger RNA, then we cannot handle the actual SARS-CoV-2 itself, which is going to wreak ha havoc. So here, the MIC2 is now loaded with the antigen and it is presented on the surface of the cell. Which cell is this? This is a macrophage or an antigen uh, dendritic cell. Now, this is MHC2. So which cell, which immune cell will this connect with? It is going to connect with the naive T cell or T helper four, CD4 cell. Remember I said that the MHC molecule number and the cells number, when we multiply them, the product is eight. So if the molecule number is two, then these, the cell number is four. So that's a CD4 cell or helper T cell. Here, once again, if you see here, CD4 is connected, the T cell receptor is connected, and then there is co-stimulation. Interleukin-4 is secreted on it. And we have seen this pathway many times before. That is why I did not make it in a very elaborate fashion. So here, the naive T cell, either in the presence of interleukin-2 will become T helper 1 cell, which will then allow a cytotoxic T cell to become activated, and that would cause the killing of the cells as we saw before. Or in the presence of interleukin-4 or absence of interleukin-12, the T helper 1 naive T helper cell will become T helper 2. T helper 2 cell will then release interleukin-4 and interleukin-5 
and these interleukin-5 is going to cause the uh, class switching, and interleukin-4 is going to cause, actually interleukin-5 is going to cause the B cells to become proliferated, interleukin-4 is going to cause class switching. The result is that the B cells will become plasma cell, and they will start making antibodies, plus they will become memory cells as well, that will now wait for the actual virus to come in and attack it. In this whole process as well, there is no spike protein that has gotten out of these cells, out of these cells. It is digested. It is then presented in a controlled fashion, the pieces of it on the surface. So I hope that this discussion kind of clarifies that the spike proteins are not going to be present abundantly and freely in our body after the vaccine is given to go and bother our ACE2. And so that means there is no uh, SARS-CoV-2 like behavior of the vaccine. Vaccine has a behavior of triggering our immune system to make memory B cells and memory T cells and trained innate immunity, which primes us for the actual attack from the virus. So I hope that this is clear. Uh, and I hope I did not mess it up while explaining it. Um, let's see if I have any relevant question here. Bill Abel says, excellent explanation. Thank you very much. So Bill, uh, you were the one who were asking for this topic as well. So hopefully it makes sense. If there is any other question related to it, I'll be happy to explain. Thank you, Anthony. Um, So Wayne says, this supports my faith in creator. This is way too complex to be the result of random atoms and molecules. It is a very sophisticated machine. Every cell in itself is a universe of function. And this is what we know so far. We do not know what other complexities are present that we would learn in the future and then take care of other diseases like cancers. So I hope that that um, clarifies the idea of what happens to the what ha happens with these spike proteins. So even if it is an adenovirus, the result is the same. That adenovirus is going to act like the lipid nanoparticle. It will bring the messenger RNA inside our cell. The remaining function is the same. And so here we are for today. Tomorrow we'll talk about um, the mixing of vaccines. Fra so there's a question. France says, Arun is asking where IL-6 is in what you presented. So um, Arun, in our previous discussions, if I present, show my screen again, I have done these uh, this mechanism of immune activation quite in um, elaborate mechanisms, uh, elaborate way. And here there is interleukin-6 that is produced from these cells as well. So I deliberately left those things out. For example, interleukin-6 is pr produced by macrophages. It is produced by dendritic cells. It is produced by many other cells here as well. I deliberately left that out because the point was to, to track the spike protein itself to see where it goes. If you pick up any previous uh, uh, videos, for example, the immune response to SARS-CoV-2, over there I have discussed this, the cytokine storm and the interleukin-6 in detail. Today, I just kind of skipped all over that and wanted to just track the spike protein with you. So uh, Samina Choudhury, tomorrow we'll talk about mixing various kinds of vaccines. Like UK is saying, UK is saying, well, you can give Pfizer and then you can give Moderna. So we're going to see if that is really OK or not.
Dave says, question, it was originally thought people with autoimmune diseases may need to avoid the vaccine. This has been reversed. Do you know what could have been the concern in this demonstration? So the basic uh, thinking was that if people have autoimmune diseases, that means their immune system is overactive and is already attacking their own body. So what will happen if you give the vaccine? But if you think about it, many people with the autoimmune diseases have become ill with the SARS-CoV-2 as well. Yes, that is one of the comorbidities that makes them at a greater risk, but still many of them recover as well. The vaccine has a very tiny chance of triggering the immune system in a negative way. On the other hand, those folks that have allergies, which is also kind of an, um, I won't want to call it autoimmune, but that still is a immune system dysregulation. It's a mast cell issue. And they are not supposed to take the vaccine because the body may respond incorrectly to something in the uh, vaccine itself. Cl closet picker, so glad that I've been here since day one. Otherwise, I'd be lost. You're very welcome. We studied together. Very welcome. So thank you very much, everyone. Margaret, thank you very much for your support today, for your donation today. That has really been helping. So thank you. And I would see you all tomorrow. We'll talk about the mixing of the vaccines. Bye-bye for now. And yes, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. There is a link in the description to buy me coffees, if you like. And there is another link in the description to, to support my work. So thank you and I'll see you tomorrow.